Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a different video. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a walkthrough to uh, my experience playing Torchlight Infinite. This video is in partnership with them. They just had Season 4 launch. It is also their first anniversary. They got lots of stuff going on, and it's been a really big year for ARPGs in general. So I think it's time I show you guys my experience so far with Torchlight Infinite in the new season and my exploration through all the new stuff that they have. So what is new this season? So first off, we have, well, we have uh, a new character, and it is a pretty cool new character. This is Erica Lightning version, and it's a super fast character that has really intricate mechanics with shocks and basically uh, snapshotting the highest shocks and doing damage based off of that. So you want to scale shock, you want to scale your max damage, you want to scale your attack speed. There's also additional scalers you can scale with movement speed in several different ways as well. So there's lots of really cool stuff there. I'm no expert expert on Torchlight Infinite, but I wanted to give you guys kind of a bit of a walkthrough to how I approach the game and a few of the things that I learned about it, so you can get at least some idea about the game. And if you do like what you see, if you are interested, make sure to check out the game. I have a Steam link below, and you can play on a mobile device if you like, but I've only played on Steam. Overall, the game is super crisp, super snappy. Um, this character, uh, it, not all the characters play exactly the same, but this new character Character, Erica Lightning version. She is insanely fast. It really is like an action action ARPG and I know some people have been looking for that experience because it is a bit of a rare one when it comes to you know uh, delivering on that sense there also is a new mechanic with each season so this one is the um, Mistville and the idea is that you have this board and you have like this red currency called Sanity. It's kind of like a roguelike event that you do each time and you interact on one of the boards. You try to spend your sanity. You try to encounter certain buildings. Some of the buildings are negative. Some of them are positive. You can acquire items that kind of carry your run and make you stronger for the duration. The idea is that you want to go further and further, but it can be more and more challenging to do that, but as you do, it gets a little bit harder to continue. It also gets a little bit harder in general, but presumably the rewards scale as well. When you close out a day, when you find the, the building that closes out the day, it can be anywhere on the board. It can be right next to the start. The idea is that you go to the clock tower, and at the clock tower, you basically have to do kind of like a mini mission. Some of these are quite easy and short. Some of these take a little bit longer, like this one, close three doors. Takes usually a couple minutes for my character, and it can get a bit tricky, especially if you do uh, multiple days in the event. Now, for the character itself here in the game, it is just an absolute blast to play. You can see that you can scale attack speed to scale your movement speed, and you can even scale it further than that. It's just one of the fastest characters in an RPG that I've played, and it's pretty good experience because it it's a game that uh, is just kind of crisp. Your character is where it is. If you die to something, it's because you actually got hit by it. There is a death recap. Um, and everything just kind of works pretty well. It's just super snappy. I actually really liked playing this character. The experience of playing this character is really fun. So I can show you guys some of the new things with some of the skills. Um, so uh, a fun thing about this character is the starting skill is the Thunder Spike. But Thunder Spike is a skill that that is um, one of the better options to use for this new character. Um, basically, the idea is that you do physical damage, you convert it to lightning, and it has some extra shock mechanics. And you can get extra shadows, which are kind of like copies that attack nearby targets for you. Um, usually, these supports add like between 30 and 40 something percent damage if it's a good one. But the first few shadows that you get essentially are just straight multipliers, like times three. If you're against like, you know, a big trash pack, it's probably not going to hit like any of the mobs more than once, maybe twice. But if it's single target, the shadows do hit the single target. So it's a really, really big multiplier to do like the shadow mechanic. And if you scale attack speed, you get tons and tons of little hits, and the little hits kind of snapshot your maximum shock, which has... I'm not going to go over all 
the mechanics of the build because honestly there is a lot to this character but that's why it's so cool because there's so many different things that can scale the damage um, if you're curious how this works, you get a bunch of skills as you level, as you get better gear. Each of the pieces of gear that you have, they have this thing called like energy up here. And the total energy is like how many supports you can attach to your skills. So this is like a fully supported skill where we have the main skill and five supports on it. Now, this energy value up here is global for your character. So the idea is you want a main skill. For this character, a lot of the abilities only apply to your main ability. So it's very important that you super stack your main ability. This isn't always the case for all characters. It can be fun if you want to try a different character or whatever. Uh, you kind of want one ability that heals you. Uh, it's kind of like a potion effect. Uh, this one only heals max life. There are others that do other things like max life and max mana, but this character has really low mana costs and we actually invest in like some uh, mana reduction. So it's not really a big deal. We only need the life. And they have this thing, the auto charge. So it's kind of like every few seconds you get enough charge to use. Kind of like your, your skilled potion in a way is what it is. This is the movement skill, the spiral spike. And we do a lot of mobility-based stuff, like higher attack speed, basically, off of it. It doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as the Thunder Spike, but we get some damage uh, modifiers from moving in general, and using Spiral Strike moves the character, so that actually can uh, up your overall damage just by using Spiral Strike. And because we do still use Thunder Spike in between moving around with our movement skill, we have a high snapshotted shot from the main ability that is often applied through spir Spiral Strike. So um, the movement skill actually clears a lot of the weaker mobs uh, that you encounter uh, through the Nether Realm and whatnot. So we have Electrocute. This is a curse. Uh, this just makes them take more lightning damage and we can basically activate it as an aura and it makes it instant as well. This is really important because this is, well, it's kind of like a ranged melee character, but this is a melee skill. You still need to be fairly close to the target to get some hits in, so getting a curse around your character is pretty good. Uh, and Burst of Anger is just, yeah, just uh, attack speed and damage. Um, I don't think the uptime is quite 100%, uh, but I think if you gear for cooldown reduction and whatnot, and maybe use a different skill, maybe you can get it pretty close or actually at 100%. Uh, another big part of the new season is they redid entirely how auras work. Uh, it used to be that you could have a whole bunch of auras, and each aura kind of um, drops your maximum mana. So uh, that was the limiting factor before, but it got like pretty complicated. And what not everyone, a lot of people, what they did is they used a lot of auras with very few supports. Now in season four, they changed it so you can have a maximum of four aura skills. And these are pretty interesting because they've also uh, adjusted a lot of the supports for the auras. So now, instead of trying to fit in as many auras as possible on your character, um, you basically have to make the decisions of how you amplify the most important auras for the character that you are trying to build. So I think that's overall uh, quite a lot of a better system, I would say. Um, there are some of the hero traits that get pretty interesting, but uh, honestly, they, they generally are just shock mechanics that can be pretty difficult to grasp if I'm explaining it in like 10 seconds here. But uh, overall, there's some really cool mechanics that allow scaling from, um, you know, the shadows, from crit stuff, obviously from attack speed, but also as you get later on, you can get movement speed scaling as well, which makes this character an extremely high damage and extremely extremely high movement skill character, movement speed character. The issue is there's not a lot of survivability. Uh, the survivability for this type of character is very much don't get hit. Now, when you start off the game, you basically have these talent trees and you move across the talent trees. When you hit a certain break point, you can, you can get like a new branch like this one if you have 12 total. And when you have like a certain number of points, you get these like passives. Um, this is pretty popular, the paralyzed one, which gives minus lane resistance if you hit something a bunch of times. And you hit stuff a lot of times. But I was actually using perception up until like level 80 or so, uh, just because the attack speed felt so, so good. It's just around level 80 and like the tier 8 
uh, Nether Realm stuff. It started to, uh, sorry, Tier Seven Nether Realm. It started to be that the single target became a little bit of a problem. Not so much for damage. It's just the single target stuff was important that I killed a boss first because I would start getting uh, one-shotted quite a bit. Uh, but I went with uh, what has been suggested by uh, a few people that are more knowledgeable in Torchlight Infinite than I am is that you start with Goddess of Hunting. You mostly work on like the attack speed and the crit stuff, which is very important for damage and survivability because you're using your speed to not get hit. We go into Blade Runner. Blade Runner has some really good mechanics and particularly has a lot of like lightning and shock based mechanics. Um, so this one here, uh, you get lucky from strikes against shock. So lucky makes your lightning damage roll twice and because of the lightning damage, at least a lot of the sources has a really big range that makes it so you end up doing a lot more. Ronin is where a lot of your survivability comes in. You have these like six life per node things. You have some movement speed and, and attack speed, extra shadows. I'm starting to work on some block. The block angle is not one that I've seen be too popular, but honestly, I think it's probably underrated. I think it's actually a pretty good choice. And another thing that I went with that I didn't see anyone else go with is this. So this is the, um, the life regain is kind of like life leech. So this is a lot of life regain and life regain interval is like a higher frequency of life leeched. So this is basically like life leech. And I did this because the character does a lot of damage and it doesn't get like one shotted that often. But other than like the potion skill, there's not a lot of recovery. And after I got these points, I was pretty happy with where my character was. So how does a character work? So yeah, you basically start off, you, um, you basically just use Thunder Spike, and as you unlock the shadows, you're gonna find your character just like really powerful really quickly. It's like actually insanely powerful. One really big thing that I love about Torchlight Infinite is a lot of the items that you get, you get right away. So let me see here if I can show you guys on the waypoint. I believe they'll show up on the map. So they have these things called treasure tropes, right? So this is like level seven. Like when you start off with the game, you start off like around ancient passage and you're making your way through, like you're at treasure trove in like, ah, like minutes into the game. So treasure trove can drop like the following items. So you can get this chest, which gives you like 750 thorns damage effectively, but it's elemental thorns damage. So if you have elemental scalers, you can scale it up some. Uh, this is actually an incredibly good chest. Uh, you can get the Rock Lizard Skull, which is an imp incredibly good one. And you can get the Lone Survivor. Okay. Uh, and you can get the uh, Omniscient Prototype, which gives you all mighty. And that gives you, like, so much energy that you can... You saw the skill tree. You can use, like, almost any skills you want with it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And they have these treasure zones uh, just throughout the leveling process throughout the campaign. I believe there's one that's even lower level if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, so a lot of the gear that you get is actually going to be from those treasure troves. Those treasure troves give you like tons of experience. And I just wanted to give you guys this thing. So like this ring, the lonesome ring. So it's a level 10 item. I got it from one of those treasure troves when I was honestly around level 10. And basically, if only one ring is equipped, the main skill has, like, added fire damage, added cold damage, added lightning damage, right? And added erosion damage. And it has a varying roll level. But you can see, if I equip this ring, my damage barely goes down. I use this ring well into the level 80s, okay? And this is a ring that I got after I had been playing the game for, like, 20 minutes. And there's a few others as well. Uh, Thunder Branch, I'm still using Thunder Branch. I believe it's from like the level 50 zone. It's a particularly good item. And I was actually using two of them. Again, after playing the game for lots of hours, well into the late game. The idea that you can start farming some like really good gear right away is really nice. I really love that about it. They also have this kind of like prototype system. I don't think I have any here, but if I go to my stash, I have a few prototype items so I can show you guys what they are like. I think I have a prototype helmet. Uh, no. Well, I have this thing. 
So basically, this is a thing that goes into the traits and unlocks an extra trait, which is massive. But this normally is like a crazy rare item. But each of the crazy rare, crazy powerful items, they have prototype versions, which are like slightly worse, but they have the same like enabler effect. So it's a really clever system because um, in a lot of other ARPGs, if you want to build a character, it's like, okay, so what you got to do is you got to make this completely different character, play it for a long time to get these items to then actually play the build that you want to play. In Torchlight Infinite, um, the access to like really good gear is immediate, which feels really good. It feels like you're not just wasting your time drooling through the campaign. So I really like that. But also the build enabler aspects of it are generally not that rare. Now, I, I usually like to play um, ARPGs in solo mode and Torch Infinite does have a solo cell phone mode. Uh, but another layer of accessing gear and stuff is made available in Season 4. Another new thing is they basically have multiplayer and trading and all the stuff that comes with it. Again, I am playing solo cell phone. It doesn't really affect me, but I know it affects a lot of you. So that's been my experience with Torchlight Infinite so far. Again, I'm no expert, but I've had quite a bit of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed my intro to the game.